So I brought them up here at ASCO has around about 20 presentations. I think there are two really um, that are real highlight. But first, let me take a step back. When you think about ibrutinib, it's the first BTK inhibitor approved. It's the only BTK inhibitor that's available. We've had three CLL phase three trials read out, uh, one mantle cell phase three read out. We've had more than 1,500 patients in these phase three studies read out. And globally today, we have more than 60 approvals and it's been used in more than 40,000 patients around the world. We're really starting to get a handle on how ibrutinib works in these patients with a lot of clinical experience. And here at ASCO, we're starting to see more about that as well. We're seeing long-term follow-up with ibrutinib in our Helios trial. We're seeing really durable progression-free survival. If we look at two years, 75% of patients are still progression-free. Whereas if we look at the control arm, which was bendamustin rituximab, and the other arm was ibrutinib, bendamustin rituximab versus bendamustin rituximab, only 20% of patients are progression-free. So 25% you know, of patients have progressed on ibrutinib arm, but 80% have progressed on the BR arm. Really shows a significant improvement in progression-free survival. Hazard ratio, very impressive at 0.199, so more than 80% reduction in the risk of progression or death. When we look at response rate too, equally exciting response rate data. But the long-term follow-up here at ASCO, we're seeing something that we've not seen before. When we use ibrutinib with BR, what we're seeing is we're seeing a deepening of response over time. Almost one-fifth of patients now, out more than two and a half years, are MRD negative. That's something that we've been striving for. So in a relapse refractory setting, the longer these patients stay on drug with ibrutinib, the better the results are, the deeper the response are, and the durability is really, really excellent. Now, another analysis that's here too is also looking at the combination of two of our other phase three trials. The Resonate 2 trial, which is the frontline study of ibrutinib versus Garambasol, and the Resonate trial, which is ibrutinib versus Ofatumumab. Pulled those together and really starting to look at what does the outcomes look like for ibrutinib, whether it's treatment naive, first relapse or second relapse. And what we see is that when you use ibrutinib first, you get the very best results the highest overall survival, the highest progression-free survival, and we're seeing higher CR rates in those treatment naive patients too. We're also seeing the best safety profile. In first relapse, it's also equally as good, perhaps not as good as that treatment naive patient, but then as we get later down the line of therapy, you're definitely not getting as much benefit. So the results really here are really showing that using ibrutinib earlier, you really do get the best results in terms of ibrutinib. So there's also some exciting data looking at novel combinations. First data being presented anywhere in the world looking like ibrutinib and venetoclax is here in mantle cell. Very exciting results, seeing MRD rates that are just exceptional. And then some of the first combination data also in diffuse large B cell. So I think ibrutinib is really providing just great outcomes for patients. Um, I think there's consistency in terms of efficacy, but the long-term outcomes are looking outstanding.